Welcome to Mrs. Pennington's Baby Development. So you're 11 weeks pregnant, now what? Well, let's talk about some of those things that you're definitely gonna want in your medicine cabinet when baby comes along. So the first thing is diaper cream. There's two types of diaper cream. There's kind of like this white paste that I think is really helpful when baby does have a bad diaper rash that kind of protects that area. I don't really feel like it absorbs into the skin and like helps heal. It just kind of protects if they do have bad diaper rash. Now, if they're just a little bit red or they're looking a little bit irritated, then I love something that is more of an olive oil based or it looks almost like Vaseline, but not Vaseline. But it looks kind of like that makeup. So my absolute favorite is the Lusol BB Balm. I love this stuff. So this has, um, so I'll tell you what's in it awesome. It works really well. It has olive oil, jojoba oil, local beeswax, avocado oil, um, flowers of, so I'm glad I'm not saying that right, lavender, chamomile, essential oil blend, vitamin E, grapefruit seed extract, citric acid, and silver citrate and natural preservative. And the star for what's a certified organic ingredient. This has been so good for um, if they just have a little bit of redness or a little bit of irritation, you know, when the baby, as soon as you know that baby has pooped, change it right away because that is what will cause diaper rash. And like, you can kind of sometimes pay attention. So sometimes some foods they eat or some things they eat will really irritate them and, and turn their tush quite red and you'll be like, what did he eat? And then realize, oh, you know what? I think there's a little pattern here. Whenever baby eats this, then they have a really irritated bottom. If you change your poopy right away, you probably shouldn't have really bad diaper rash. Once you start introducing solids, there might be a few things you introduce baby to that really does irritate them and you notice that kind of burns baby's skin. Every once in a while, you will be going somewhere and the baby's in a perfectly clean diaper and you put baby in the car and they make a horrible poop and you don't realize and you go to a couple different places like you're just trying to drive through where you don't get the school picked up when you get home and you're like, oh no, like, so you've been sitting and this dirty diaper for 20 minutes or half an hour while I went and did these quick errands and I didn't even get them out. I didn't know. And so that is when you might find some irritation on the bottom and it is just not good. So I have some cream for that and hopefully it's good. Now I have to say with my first, so my kids teethe rather early. They teethe around three or four months. And so I used that oral teething gel and I used Highlands oral teething gel and I used the Aura gel all natural and I used Highlands teething tablets and that the natural stuff, that sort of stuff, that gave my kids the worst diaper rash. I used it for the first and I used it a little bit for the second and then I stopped, I don't use it anymore because it really irritated them. So that was like the first thing other than mother's milk that my first had ever had and it irritated them so much. So I ended up putting baby in um, a little, like holding them in a little like, bath of um, oatmeal and you put baking soda in there and that really helped if you do put oats in your bathtub get the quick oats or put it in some sort of like big tea bag or something where the nice oat milk can soak out but you don't have a vast supply of like oats at the bottom of your bathtub when you get done that can be disgusting um, if you get the quick oats you can usually get them to go down without clogging up your bath. Uh, the rolled oats won't. They'll, they'll just kind of stick up to the sink. Then they'll clog. But that was a, that's a quick thing to grab around the house um, and just put in the warm water. Have, if you have a basin, that's awesome to put them in, like the like a big plastic like baby basin. You can put them in there, or um, just hold them in the bathtub. Hopefully, like about about four or five months, they're able to sit a bit. Six months is definitely, let's hope you're sitting well. Um, don't ever leave them in the bathtub more than like a towel. You never know, you might pitch forward, even at like one. Um, you don't want to take your towel off, so just a thought. So the teething gel or the teething tablets really irritated my kids and I didn't use it after the second kid. What I did do from then on, if they really were in a lot of pain and really struggling and really hurting, then I did use a little bit of baby infant Tylenol. Um, if they were like, with the first two teeth, the top two teeth, those can be really painful to get in. And I had one baby that had the worst time with those top two teeth, very painful. And another that had a really hard time because they were getting in four at once. Um, the rest of mine have not had too much problem with teething. They're a little fussy. 
they're a little funny, but it's been okay. I haven't really had to use the infant Tylenol. Um, let's talk about infant Tylenol. So my all-time favorite, which I should have gotten like right away, this is an infant Tylenol suppository. It is amazing. It has a perfect dose. I've got one in here. So it is quite small, shape, little white bullet. You open it up, it is the perfect amount. So this is for children six months to um, 36 months. You can use one of these every six hours for six to 11 months. For 12 to 36 months, you can use one every four to six hours, but no more than five doses in 24 hours. Um, this is might be the only way you'll be able to get Tylenol into a baby or a child under the age of two. It is amazing. Um, when you do, so you just stick it right in their bottom and hold your thumb there for like 30 seconds or a minute because their little muscles will just push it back out. And then you're like, ah, trying to like get it and it started to dissolve and you're trying to put it back in. Anyway, I, you know, I'm just like, oh, mommy's going to help you. It's going to be a little owie. Like mommy's just going to help you. You don't feel very good, do you? And then I'll just like put it in and like hold my thumb. It's a little comfortable. But then it kind of melts and then they're like kind of okay and then you like pick them up. This is awesome. Okay, the problem with this, with infants Tylenol, is they will spit out and they don't know how much they've taken and how much they haven't. And you don't want to give them another dose, but you can tell they spit a lot out. So that's, that's really frustrating. Um, when you do buy these, look at all of them and find one with the furthest out expiration date. It's so frustrating. Like, I like to have this on hand, but I was looking. This one already expires in, like, six months from now. Like, come on. Like, I love to have it, but they expire usually really quickly. So, look at them. It's really frustrating to buy one and then realize um, it's, it's going to be off in five months. And I'm not going to get through it before then. So, when I first was born, that was actually the time when they took Tylenol off the market. So, there was a time period where... Um, it was just doctors felt like parents were highly overusing it and they took it off the market. And they kind of did this push where a fever is not necessarily bad. A fever can help fight the illness and maybe the body needs that fever to fight the illness off. Now, a low fever. And of course, you're going to call your doctor and say, this is what's going on. They have a runny nose. It was stuffy. And they have a fever of 100. And your doctor's going to talk. If it is 100, 101, 102, you're, you're probably okay. Um, as long as they're drinking, you make sure like they're having wet diapers, they're like drinking plenty of liquid, and you're talking to your doctor. You get to 103, 104, uh, anything above that, you're going to be in the hospital. But 103, 104, you really need to get that fever down. Uh, when it's a little low fever, I generally won't give any medicine during the day, but then I'll give it at night so that they get a good rest. So that's kind of my compromise um, with using Tylenol. I, I do understand the idea that the, the fever is kind of good for the body and, and the body is fighting it. But at night, I feel like they need rest. And if the fever is keeping them from sleeping, they're not going to sleep anyway. So that's kind of my protocol, what I've, I've decided to do. And I do talk to my doctor in a few weeks about how he's feeling about things and what I think is wrong with baby or if baby's okay. As long as baby is drinking. And um, you can actually even do this thing on their skin. So you can pinch. And if it pops back, then you've got enough water with your body. If you pinch and it kind of stays pinched and it's like real thin, uh, dehydrated. <laughs> so be careful of that. As long as there's lots of wet diapers and baby's definitely drinking, you should be okay. If baby is not drinking and there are not wet diapers, then baby's getting dehydrated and probably needs some IV fluids in the hospital. That's kind of my thoughts with Tylenol. I, I love, these are at Walmart. Feverol, it's a Tylenol suppository. They're awesome. Um, I always, I love to have this on hand as well. And then ask your doctor the dosage. So even though it says infant, they now don't even have a dosage under the age of two. So you got to ask your doctor, see what they say. All right, let's, so if baby has like a really runny nose and there's just lots of stuff going on, I do love the nose of Frida. Now, if you can find the original nose of Frida, it comes in a little blue container, plastic container. It's better than this one. So that was the one I bought. I 
couple years ago, a little blue container, the original Noah's Akrita. And yeah, after a couple years, you're like, this is kind of yuck. I'm throwing it out. And then had another kid, bought another one. I wasn't impressed. I'll just say, um, so there's no cute little blue um, package for it to come in. It's a, a little bit cheaper. And this thing falls off all the time, which it didn't with the original. It still works. It's still the same concept. Notice, so what you do with this is you put it in baby's nose and then you pull the snot out of it. Sounds terrible, right? So there is a little blue thing here that keeps the snot from coming towards you. So that's nice to know. And they, there's several of these come in the package and then they sell a box with extra in it. So when your baby's done with their cold, you can replace it. Usually the mucus will just get here this out and make sure it air dries and everything. The idea is you can just pull and that's better than those syringe bulbs because you can kind of control how much pressure. Um, I usually do both sides of the nose. I also have to say that when an infant or a baby is nursing and are drinking milk, they of course breathe through their nose to do that and if their nose is stopped up they'll just pull off and breathe and then nurse a bit more but the whole time they're like and generally they're able to clear their nose. Like it's amazing. Like they'll they'll do that while they're nursing and they're generally able to then move that stuff down and then clear their nose. It's awesome. I love that. And you know, if they're having a hard time doing that or I usually I'll give my baby like a hot if they have the cold, I'll give them a hot bath and then I do the nose of Frida, get everything out. I've gotta love the big vapor rub the feet, on the neck, on the chest. That's what I do. Sometimes a little on both. Here is an all natural version, which I kind of like too. So this is Maddie's all natural chest rub. So a little bye bye baby. And it's awesome. I really like it. It smells similar to the VIX and I like that it's all natural. So this has sunflower oil, coconut oil, sunflower wax, castor oil, vitamin E, and essential oils of chamomile, dillweed, lavender, eucalyptus, ooh, another one I can't say, and coriander. So no petroleum, no hydrated oils, no parabens, no fiber. Is that how you say that? So this is pretty good. I like this. I have to say, if you're buying Lusol and you're going to get some stuff off online, they also have a similar product. So I love the Booty Bomb, and then I love this stuff. This stuff works better than anything I've ever had for the red cheeks. Like in the winter, they get that like wind burn on their cheeks. They get these bright red cheeks, or like when they're sick, like it just gets chapped. So this is Lusol Chin and Cheek Balm, and it is awesome. So some kids too, when they nurse, they just get like this, like, or they'll lick their lip, and they get like a chapped lip or the milk would just kind of sit here and they get like a little bit irritated. Some kids also, when they nurse, they like get a pool of milk here. You just gotta wipe up. Otherwise they can get like a yeast infection. Anyhow, um, so this is really awesome. This really does clear up those red cheeks really well. I love that about this stuff. I know that they also have like, a, it's like a Neosporin or a, I don't know, like first aid ointment, but it's like all natural. And then let's talk about baby's bath stuff. So at Target, just about anywhere, you can get like an organic. I got this one at Target. Looks pretty good. Um, a baby bath, you know, unscented. This is for their hair and for their skin when you're washing them. Now, note, it has a pump. This is like essential. If you are taking a shower with baby and you, you can't do, you need one, you need to hold baby with a you can't like take the lid off and like squirt some. It, it doesn't work. You gotta have the pump. I even love the ones that come out with the foam. That's awesome. So get one with the pump. Now, one thing I don't like in it is soy. So I got some um, bird's bees. And I usually don't mind bird's bees, but I noticed that a lot of the bird's bees have like soy in it. So I bought this. It's like a multi purpose stuff. And I was had read like several of the back of several of theirs. I'm like, oh, there's like soy in here. Soy is really estrogenic. So we know that women who, there's kind of like an estrogen dominance in a lot of women. We know that women who are estrogen dominance can actually put a, a progesterone cream on their arm and then it like soaks into their body and it increases the progesterone. And I'm like, 
So what happens if you like white soy? Oh my gosh, does that decrease your estrogen? Now, I'm not like super excited about that because I was kind of disappointed when I bought it. But so I read through it and then when I got home, I read through it again. Oh, I forgot some soybean oil. So I think we'll just go with that for now. So here's another thought. Definitely need some nail clippers. So, and if your baby is born with like skin underneath their fingernails, clean that out before you clip their nails because you might clip their skin by accident. Now, if there are some things that you want to just go ahead and have a discussion now with your husband about what he's going to take care of, I would definitely put the nail clipping on the list. If you've got like clipped your nails for like five or six or seven years, it's like forever. And it's like every week or two, they start having long toenails, long fingernails. That's like a task I did not know about. It takes like you're gonna be clipping those nails for years. So if that's something that you can hand off and negotiate with the husband now. Like by the way, you were doing the nail clipping every week or two. Go ahead. The other thing you didn't know is you gotta wipe that kid for like five years. It is forever. If that baby has gone to the bathroom and they're potty trained, you still need to wipe them. Um, with boys, you know, generally just one. But still, they're going to be like five, still young for you to come and wipe them. And it is important to wipe them make sure they're clean, especially girls. So girls really need to make sure. Always wipe front to back. We know this. We wipe front to back. Their arms are not long enough to do it right forever. So you really need to make sure that you wipe them well front to back, make sure everything's removed, or they'll get UTIs, a urinary tract infection, and that is a real problem with little girls. You really need to make sure they're wiped and wiped well, and you make sure you always wipe them. By the time they're like four or five and they're starting to do preschool or kindergarten, hopefully their arms are long enough where they can wipe themselves well, and you really taught them, and they are wiping well, and make sure that they do. Make sure they don't neglect that, because that can be a real problem. So, you can also give that to the husband, like, when you're at home, you're wiping the bottom of every toenail, clean it out. Like, that would definitely be something that I would make an annual change on and put the diapers for. <laughs> so it's those little things you're like, okay, you're home, honey. Here you go. <laughs> it's nice to, like, have a little bit of division of duty. Here's some things that you're going to be taking care of. I hope you're enjoying. You've got one more week, and then you are to week 12. That's very exciting.